Okay, so hi everyone and welcome to tonight's webinar on buying a home in Israel. My name is Rafi Shulman and I'm one of the co-founders of Volume Advisors. Uh, we've been helping people make Aliyah for many years and also Anglos who are living in Israel. Um, this webinar really is for people who are thinking about Aliyah and people who are living in Israel. Um, one of the things, one of the questions that we get a lot is about buying a home. You know, it's very often the most complex and expensive decision that many of us make. And especially when you're in Israel, where it's a different process, a different culture, a different language. And so we thought it would be helpful to put together a webinar, go over some of the information, share with you some interesting projects, and really help you uh, through this process. So I want to start off just by thanking the panelists and, and introducing you to them. So we'll start with Menachem Levinsky who's the head of the mortgage department at Mizrahi Bank for foreign residents. Um, Paul Bloom, who just made Aliyah about a week ago from New Jersey, and um, actually did this about 15, 16 years ago and helped a number of families find a home in Israel. Um, Abraham Levinsky, who um, is having some problems with his camera, but will be joining so shortly, um, is a real estate lawyer. And last but not least, we have Anita Tias and Laurie Tzchaki, who are working with me at Olim Advisors. So thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We appreciate your time. Before we get started, just a couple of quick things. Um, we're gonna do a Q&A session at the end. We know that you have a lot of questions. So just go ahead and type your questions into the chat window and then we'll get to them at the end. Um, there are a lot of people who have registered and who, and who joined us. So we're not gonna be able to get to everybody. So if we can't get to you, or if we can't get into the very details of your situation, we encourage you to reach out to us. We'll put a slide at the end with all of our contact information. So you'll be able to reach out to us and you'll be able to talk to us and we can really um, you know, delve into your questions and make sure that we can answer them. Okay. So let me, let me just start by giving you a, a quick overview of Olim Advisors and who we are and what we're doing. So we um, started Olim Advisors back in 2016 and the goal, as I mentioned, was to help people make Aliyah, to encourage people, and then also once they get here, to help them with the challenges. You know, for those of you who um, are living in Israel, you know that the challenges don't just end once you get here, the challenges weeks and months and sometimes years into the process. And so we wanna be able to, to help you and to guide you through that and deal with the challenges. Over the, the past few years, we've been blessed to help over 12,000 Olim and Anglos who are living here. And please God, we'll, we'll be able to help many more. So if you know of anybody that hasn't been able to, uh, that isn't able to attend this webinar or that doesn't know about us, let them know that we're here, that we're here to help and they can just reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to help. I think one of the things that we focus on is really providing with that level of service from beginning of the process all the way through the end. So we're not just here with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's really to give you this personal, um, uh, to accompany you through this process from the first moment when you're thinking about it to the actual moment where you're making Aliyah and to when you're um, here. And if you're looking to buy a home, we also want to accompany you through this entire process to make sure that you understand what you're getting in, involved with and to protect you and your interests. When you look at buying a home, you know there are a lot of people that we talk to who have dreamt about buying a home for many years. And we talked about all the different reasons that people are looking to do it. And we wanna help you realize that dream. We wanna be able to help you deal with all the challenges of buying a home in Israel. And the process is, is very different. Menachem is gonna talk about mortgages and opening up a bank account. Avraham is gonna talk about the legal aspects. Paul is gonna talk about the process that they went through. And even if you bought a home in the US or Australia or the UK or wherever you are right now, you'll see that the process in Israel is different. It's not impossible and it's not overwhelming, but it is different. And so we're here to help you through that process. Um, one of the things that we really have focused on is, is setting ourselves apart from the real estate companies. So we're not a developer, we're not a real estate agent, we're not um, just a marketing company. We're really a neutral company that can guide you and direct you and refer you in the different directions that you need to go. And so people come to us because they view us as the trusted source for guidance and for, for information. And so even if you're not ready to buy a home yet, but you have questions, 
come to us, ask us the questions, and one of us between, between the team here will be able to answer your questions and, and guide you in the right direction. And that's really, I think, um, the essence of, of why we got together here is that we wanna be able to help you and, and, and meet your needs from A to Z. So it's not just about mortgages, it's not just about finding a home, it's not just about the legal aspects, it's really everything that goes into the transaction. If you need a tax advisor, if you need an inspector, if you need a property manager, we have contacts, we have relationships, and we can help you along those ways. So with that, again, I wanna welcome you and I'm, I'm gonna hand it over to Paul. Um, sorry, jumped the gun a little bit. One last slide that I want to talk to you about. Um, and this is really just an overview of the market. So I wanted to share with you a little bit of insight into what's going on in Israel and what's been happening over the past few years. Um, so if you look at the top graph there in the top left corner, you can see um, how an investment in real estate would have done over the past 12 years. So in essence, this index, which Mizrahi, um, the Bank of Mizrahi provided me with the data. If you look at the data, if somebody would have spent $100 on a home in 2008, over the past 12 years, um, you can see how it would have grown. And now in 2020, 12 years later, that 100 shekel, sorry, not dollars, that 100 shekel would be about 200 shekels. So uh, your investment more or less would have doubled. And of course, it depends on, on where you're investing and what you're investing in. But the, the idea behind this index is that it's an average. And so you can see that the real, estate, the real estate market in Israel has done very well over the past 12 years. Now, the question that we all ask is, well, what's going to happen in the future? And while we don't know, no one has a, a crystal ball, there are some um, you know, data points that I wanted to share with you that you can kind of get a sense of what's going to happen in the near future. So the, the graph that we have here on the right side is really two data points. One is total number of, of deals that have been done over the past uh, you know, year, year and a half or so, uh, going back to December 2019. And you can see that now, especially now that Corona is ending and in Israel things are turning around, there are more and more deals that are happening. The second thing, the red line is, uh, is a percentage of those deals that are done by investors. And why is this important? Because when you look at, when you look at the typical deal, a lot of people are buying homes because they need to. They just, they've been renting and they, and they want to buy a home. And that's one reason. But if you look at the investors, they're buying and they're investing in real estate because they've analyzed Israel as a country and they feel that it's a, a good option. They've looked at the economy. They look, they've looked at the real estate market and they feel that this is a good place to diversify and invest their money. And so those of you who are looking at real estate as an investment, this is an indication that the trend is going in the right direction, right? The key is finding the right opportunities. And the last data, the last table here that I wanna share with you is just a little bit of insight that we're seeing here on the ground. So we're in Israel and we're starting to get a sense of what's, what's happening and how things are changing. And so if you look at um, Olim, if you, if you go back over the past few years, people from North America and Europe typically move to about a handful of cities. They move to Yerushalayim, they move to Tel Aviv, they move to Ra'anana, they move to Modi'in, to Ramat Bet Shemesh. And so those are the big Anglo communities and the big com communities where people from outside of Israel, from Europe and North America are moving to. But look at the table and you'll see some interesting things. There's some new cities that are kind of cropping up and appearing on the list. So cities like Rehovot, cities like Tzfat, Carmiel, which is up north, and Ramatgan are cities that in the past, a lot of Anglos and a lot of Europeans didn't necessarily consider. And now they're starting to move towards. So if you're looking to get ahead of the curve, if, you, you know, if, you're, if you're thinking, well, I don't want to just invest in something that has already uh, jumped. I want to invest in something before people uh, move there and before the prices spike, then these are some cities that you should keep in mind. The other cities that I've highlighted are cities that a lot of people haven't even heard of, Ashdod, Naharia, Haifa, Zichron, and Batyam. What's interesting and what's, what's in common, what all these have in common is that they're on the beach. Right? So if you think about what a lot of people now are looking for, they want to be in Israel, not just enjoy the beautiful weather that we have, but also enjoy the beaches that we have. And so people now are looking at other cities besides Netanya and besides Tel Aviv. They're looking at other cities that are more affordable, where they think there's an investment opportunity. So just a glimpse into what's going on in, in the market share. And of course, like we talked about, we'd be happy to talk to you about it in more detail, one-on-one. -on -one. So with that, I'm going to now hand it over to Paul, who will talk to you a little bit 
about his experience and what he did. Good afternoon, everybody. So what I like to do is kind of share what I view as my success story when it comes to buying real estate in Eretz Israel. What we learned you know, from the process and hopefully it'll help you accelerate your decision-making process as you take a look at real estate in, in Eretz Israel. And then we'll summarize. Next, next step. So let me tell you the story. One day I was walking home from shul with a very good friend of mine, uh, Irving Cantor. And I was in my late 40s, he was in his, his early 50s. And we were talking about what do we want to do when we really grow up, when we retire you know, 15 to 16 years from that point in time. And we, we talked about, you know, do we want to move to Florida? Or do we want to go to Israel? And we had this discussion as we were walking home from shul. And we came to the conclusion that the, the only right answer was to move to Israel. We said, you know, I think a lot of our friends have the same type of situation where they need to make a determination of what they want to do once they retire. So we decided to kind of call a meeting of people in our community uh, and offer them, we're going to now talk about what's going to happen in 15 years to us as we retire. And we want to focus in on what is the opportunity if our alternative is really to move to Eretz Israel. So we brought down developers, we brought down real estate agents, we brought bankers, and we brought lawyers to really address this group. When we first started, we expected 30 people to show up. It turned out at our first, first meeting, over 150 people did show up. One of the things that we didn't have though, we really didn't have any feet on the ground. So an organization like Golden Advisors could, could have been very, very helpful to us as we went through this process. At the end, after about, I would say about a year, and if I look forward to three years after that, roughly about 50 families from this group of 150 actually bought real estate uh, in Eretz Israel. Next slide. And when you think about why people invest in property in Eretz Israel, there are a whole bunch of reasons. As uh, Rafi mentioned, one is for investment. Rafi showed you a chart where the investment was doubled. In my case, in Middle Yerushalayim, and I just had my house assessed uh, a few months ago, it actually quadrupled. Definitely the best investment I ever made uh, by far. And I'm a very aggressive investor. It, bypassed all the investments that I made in, in the NASDAQ. But also I had my children. I had two children living in Israel. One of them actually lived in my house for three years before they moved to Ramat Beit Shemesh. When she moved out, my other son who lived in Eretz Israel became my rental management. And she rented the apartment for short-term rentals. So the apartment really didn't cost me anything at all. So I was living in Eretz Israel when I came to visit, which was roughly between 30% of the time early on. I've now increased about 50% of the time. It was to me it was zero cost because i knew it was going to be a place where i wanted not only to visit but use it as a part-time resident when i do travel to Eretz israel and eventually as a retirement resident and eventually as a place i'd want to live for aliyah next chart the most important decision that you'll have to make is which neighborhood you want to live in and there are going to be lots of factors that will go into that determination. We, as a group, decided that, that 10 of us would want to live in the same building. So we found a new development. It was actually in French Hill. We were very excited about it. It was a beautiful development on paper. And we said, you know what? Let's take a look at the, at the neighborhood. Just make sure that it's really a good neighborhood for our group. And it turned out that it was beautiful, beautiful apartments but it was a very mixed neighborhood. It was a combination of 50% religious, 50% secular. It was very close to uh, Hebrew University on Harad Sofim and then the hospital Harad Sofim. Uh, so that was a very positive. We want to know what the shopping was. Well, the shopping wasn't really developed for our taste. People wanted to walk to the old city, which when you start looking at an apartment, especially in Yerushalayim, you think it's so important. It, it is very important, but it's not really the most important thing you should be looking at. What are access to shuls? What are the access to highways as you go out of Yerushalayim? Are the cultural centers? So all these are types of things that you really need to think about when you're trying to choose where you want to make your investment in real estate. Next chart, please. So the next steps that I think you really need to think about, first of all, listen to the presentations. Both Menachem and Avram and Laura have a tremendous amount of insight of real estate in Eretz Israel. You and leverage their insight 
on what's going in Eretz Israel. There are tremendous opportunities that exist today. Determine your neighborhood. That's the number one focus that you should have and what your budget is. Because obviously, if you have a budget of $100,000, you're not going to be able to buy an apartment in downtown Yerushalayim. So your budget is a key input as to what makes sense for you to consider as a neighborhood. And once you make that decision, my recommendation is either you should go to Israel or have an agent of yours who will be able to really look at the neighborhood you're interested in and have them answer for you the types of questions that you need answered so you can make a very solid decision as to where you want to purchase real estate in Eretz Israel. Next, next show. Some of the questions you may want to ask, do you want to do buy a piece of apartment by yourself or do you want to get a group of people? When we looked at French Hill as a group of people, we got a really, really good deal because we had 12 families who put down an, a deposit and said, we want to live together in this particular area. Well, it turns out it didn't work out as well as we expected because we didn't have the types of insight that Rafi and Menachem and Laura have. But we got a, we got a deposit back, which was really very nice. We didn't expect. And we all, we all bought in neighborhoods that were very close to each other. So you have to figure out when you want to move, where do you want to move? Do you want to make Aliyah? Are you doing this for an investment? Do you want to buy in a new development? Do you want to buy an existing, uh, an existing building? And you also need someone, as Rafi mentioned, who's really looking out for your best interest, not the developer's best interest, but your best interest. And that's why an organization like Golem Advisors could have been very, very helpful to us when we went on our journey you know, 17 years ago. And one of the things that they're willing to do is provide you personal advisors to work with you one-on-one -on -one to help answer questions that you may have about buying property in Eretz Israel. Next, next, next and last slide. Each one of you have the assets available to you, you have the support available to you, and you have an opportunity to invest in Israeli real estate. Not only make a killing from a financial perspective, but really to kind of set up yourself and your family for the next 50 years of your life, you know, living in Eretz Israel. And what you shouldn't do, and I have friends of mine who come to me every, almost every day when I'm back in Highland Park Edison, they said, we should have, we could have, we would have, but don't let that but stand in your way. If you have the opportunity, make that decision as, as hard as you think it may be, it's a very, very important decision, both for you and for your family. So I wish all of you the best of luck as you begin this journey of investing in Israeli real estate. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Laura, who's gonna talk a little bit about, uh, about some of the properties, some of the projects that we're looking at. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Paul. That was amazing. What a story. <laughs> so many families coming together here, incredible. Um, I studied in Hebrew, so I know that neighborhood very well. Um, so we're very, very excited to help people find a home in Israel. Whether you're living here and you're looking to find a home, you're looking for an investment, you're looking to make aliyah, or you want um, a vacation home, we are here to make sure that you're getting the best deal to figure out exactly what you're looking for, what your budget is, and to find a home that's most appropriate for you and your family. Whether it's way up north from Achziv, I don't know if anyone's heard of it, but I've slept on that beach, it's gorgeous to Nahariya, Haifa, Zichron, wow, what a beautiful area. Netanya, Ranana, Tel Aviv, Ramat Gan, Rishon LeZion, Ashdod, Jerusalem, of course, Bet Shemesh, Ramat Bet Shemesh, Ashkelon, and Kiryat Gat. We have developments and um, projects everywhere to offer anyone different price points. Everyone's looking for different things. So definitely reach out to us and we will help you to find what's best for you. I want to talk about two projects today. Um, they're not suited for every person, but both of them, wow, wow, wow. So we as kids actually lived in Netanya, but at the time there was really nothing there. There's a neighborhood called Ir Yamim. It is absolutely magnificent. The way that it's built is so smart. There's an open area shopping center where people are sitting at coffee shops and restaurants. And then you walk down this promenade of park to park to park, and you reach the beach without hitting any, any streets. So for me, for my kids, I know that they can go from having a coffee to walking down to the beach without having to cross the street. And then brilliantly, whoever planned this, built a road underneath this promenade. So it's almost like a tunnel that roads can, so that cars can reach the beach from underneath this promenade. 
So I was wowed by this neighborhood and then I saw apartments in this three um, luxury tower um, development. It's got 165 apartments, but as they say in Hebrew, it's being sold like uh, like rolls. They're going by the second. It's unbelievable to see the, the whole real estate market in this country. The date of completion for this is December 2022, but if it's something that you're looking at and you're interested in, reach out to us now because it's being sold so quickly. I don't even know what will be available. Um, again, it's just, uh, I would say, seven to ten minute walk to the beach, um, beautiful cafes, shops, and you're in, you're in Netanya, which is probably 15 or 20 minutes from Tel Aviv. Of course, if there's no traffic. If there's traffic, forget about it. <laughs> um, and they have three bedroom and four bedroom apartments available, about 135 square meters with big balconies, 24 square meter balconies, looking at the ocean. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, starting at 3.13 million shekel, which is about $965,000. Again, it's not everyone's price point, but if it's something that you can afford and you're looking to live by the beach, this is definitely something to look at. Ilya Mim and Natanya. Now, another project that we saw was in, um, in Ramat Gan. Ramat Gan is um, a city just next to Tel Aviv. And I was wowed by this project. It's just by the Bursa. The Bursa is the, the diamond district of Ramat Gan on a quiet street and literally overlooking the train and overlooking Tel Aviv. So I was a 10 minute walk from Tel Aviv, but the prices were a third. And what a view and quiet, not the busyness of Tel Aviv, not the noise, not the honking. I was absolutely wowed by this building. Finished beautifully, views from all around, huge windows, high ceilings, absolutely magnificent. They have um, four bedroom and three and four bedroom apartments, again, sold in seconds. So if this is something that you're interested in, if you're looking to move to a Tel Aviv area, um, but not necessarily pay the price of Tel Aviv, this is an amazing investment um, or an amazing place to live. The prices there start from 3.3 million, I believe, were the, were the price points that it started from. Again, it's a, it's, a, it's a price point that's not for everyone, but if Tel Aviv is what you're looking at and you don't want to pay the prices there, you want the quietness, there's a shul right by there, parks, and on the other hand, you're just by the train station and just by Tel Aviv. This is a great thing to, to look at and you can uh, reach out to us. So um, just two, two projects. There are projects all over the country at different price points, whether it's Bet Shemesh, Be'er Sheva, Achziv, Haifa, Jerusalem. Um, reach out to us and let us know what you're looking for and we will be happy to, um, to help you find your home. Thank you and Menachem, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Do you hear me now? Yeah, yes, perfectly. perfectly. Yes. Avram, are you there? We hear you very good. Okay, first, thank you all for attending the real estate event today. Many thanks to Paul, Rafi, Anita, Lara and Avram for organizing the event. So far you have heard about Olim Advisors, about Paul's experience in buying properties in Israel, a little about properties in Netanya, Yamim. And now you will hear a bit about the possibilities of, of obtaining financing for purchase of properties in Israel. And immediately after, Advocate Avraham will talk about legal matters related to the purchase of properties in Israel. Later, we will also answer your question. I saw some of the question, you know, running on, on the screen and we'll talk after that. Before I go into details, I just say that I have been in that field in Mizrahi Tfachot Bank for almost 30 years. And the, the truth is that I have already forgotten Hebrew language. Maybe you can help me. <laughs> I will now present a general rules for financing the purchase of property in Israel, the first slide. Okay, you see in the left side, no immigrants, and the right side, foreign residents. 
Israeli and uh, no immigrants. I mean, even Israeli who live in the state, if you have to that sort ID, and this is your first property, you can obtain, you can get, we can consider, give you up to 75%, yes, uh, uh, of the value of the property, while for foreign people who, who don't have a Israeli ID, we can give by law only up to 50%. So remember, or you are no immigrants, or if you have ID number and you live in the state, you by law, you can get up to 75%. And uh, if you don't have only 50%. As Israeli or no immigrants, two thirds can be variable rate. I mean, you can take the loan on variable rate. And at least one third is to be, to be on a fixed rate. You know, if you'd like to, to have more than third on fixed rate, it is allowed. But if you'd like to have more than two thirds of the loan on variable rate, it is not allowed. For no immigrant and for Israeli, the only uh, currency allowed is net Israelization. Foreign people can have fixed or variable if somebody from the States, you would like to get it all fixed in shekel, you can have it. If you'd like all in viable rate, you can have it in dollar or in euro for people live, live in, in, in uh, Europe. So, you know, from one side you can get less than Israeli, but from the other end, you can have all, you're more flexible, you can have your loan on viable rate. You can, get all, you can get all loan on Israeli shekel linked to dollar or dollar loan, on variable rate. What's the, what is the difference between variable uh, rate and fixed rate? I think it's not like in, in the States. On, in in uh, Israel, fixed rate, if you'd like to prepay early, you may pay penalty, remember this. While if you'd like to pay, prepay variable rate, you can give a notice of 30 days, you can, you can prepay it without any penalty. Uh, any penalty. So, Therefore, some, some people, uh, you know, if they, you know, from foreign people, which they think that they may pay the loan over 10 years, we can give them loan for 20 or 30 years. And uh, if they take all the loan on viable rate, they can uh, prepay it early without any problem. Also, foreign people can have the loan in dollar, euro, or shekel, while the Israeli can get it only in net Israeli shekel. The next uh, slide, uh, Rafi. Okay, in order, in order to give approval in principle, it doesn't cost you anything. We are willing to send you application form in English because I told you before, I forgot my English, Hebrew, I don't know. So maybe Anita will teach me some Hebrew from time to time. Uh, why, we why, why we send it? Because according to the law in Israel, the maximum monthly payment cannot exceed, cannot exceed 40% of your net income. When I'm talking about net income, I'm talking about income after taxes and after mortgages in the States. So for example, if somebody has $10,000 uh, brutal worth, I mean, before taxes, he paid taxes in 2000 and uh, uh, he has mortgages 2,000, so he left with a $6,000 net. 40,000 uh, of that is um, 2,400. So I can, give him I can give him a loan with the maximum payment will be $2,400 uh, a month. So, okay, in order to, in order to uh, approve or give you approval in principle, we are willing to send you application form and we ask you to send us a passport, passport and additional ID. If you have Israeli passport, it's enough. We don't need more than that. But if you have US passport, we need also additional ID. Last three months, a, a salary statement. If you are an employee, if not, we ask you to give, to get for us approval from an accountant about, you know, the last half year or year. We would like to get last three months bank statement, personal bank statement, just to see that money get in and money get out of your account. A da tax declaration for the last two years, where I'm talking about a personal tax, uh, which is 1040, which each one of you fill every year. And I mean, 
For 2020, most of my clients, they did not supply it yet, but they send me either last three salary statements or they give me letter for accountant that they, in 2020, you know, their income was as similar as 2018, uh, 19, 18. That's enough for me. Also, we ask to get a, a credit card, a, no credit card. A credit and the, and the score. I mean, uh, to know what is a score, somebody less than 700, we check what is the reason. Sometimes we approve, sometimes we don't approve, but we ask to get credit report and the score. Next, uh, next uh, slide. Okay. Now I'd like to talk about uh, a few things which is important. It is not only approval in principle. There is a few stages which we will help you to go through together with the people that you see on the screen, Rafi, uh, Lara, Anita, Abraham, Paul. What I mean by that? We are willing to check if you found property, the bank is willing to check the legality of your property. I mean, if you send us a legal document, the bank will check it without any you don't have to pay for that. I mean, you, the approval in principle, it's for you. You as an individual, you get approval from us, but we would like also to check the property to see that the property, no lien, nothing problem in the property. So we are willing to, to check it. We ask you to do a appraisal of the property. Not always, first hand, usually we don't ask if you buy, buy from a builder, which the, a, a project is financed by one of the uh, banks in Israel, we don't ask you, but if you buy second hand, we ask, we ask you to do valuation before and to see what is the value. Major point, we ask you, we suggest you to open an account if you, even if you are in the state and to transfer your initial funds to, to your account to purchase the property. What I mean by that, I, have, I had many clients who sign a contract and all of a the sudden they forgot to send their initial funds, forgot to open an account. They were not my, my clients, otherwise I would have uh, lead them what to do. And uh, what is the problem? To open an account, it's not so easy today. It, is not, we, it can be done by you being in the state. You don't need to come here. You can appoint uh, Abraham or any other lawyer who understand this and do it. And uh, also to wire money from United States or any country to Israel, it is not an easy job because the bank will always ask you, always will ask you, what is the source of fund? Did you pay taxes on the fund? Therefore, we suggest to open an account before, even now, even if you did not decide at all to do anything, let's start with open an account. Put money in the account that in the time that you will decide to do something, you have already account. In order to, to, to open an account, of course, you need to get power of attorney. You need to go power of attorney also to, to your lawyer, to Abraham or any other lawyer, in order to check your, uh, your contract and to behave uh, and to act in your behalf and to help you in all of this. Okay, if you do all of this, if you get approval on, on you, if you get approval on the property, if you do valuation when needed, if you open an account and and, uh, and uh, moved your initial funds. Believe me, you can sleep at night and I can give you, you know, I can ask some, some clients if they will allow me to give their name and to tell you, you can sleep at night, you can sign the contract and you can feel good. Uh, this is for now, Rafi. All other, other questions, I am ready to listen later. Thank you very much, Menachem. Okay, now we're gonna turn it over to Abraham who's gonna talk a little bit about the, the legal uh, process of buying a home. Thank you very much, Rafi. And uh, uh, thank to you all, first of all, that you come, came here and that you are here with us to see uh, this very, very special event. And thank you all, uh, Rafi, Anita, Lara, everybody that you helped to do this amazing thing. Also thank to you, Menachem. And uh, uh, we will start, uh, before I'm starting, I want to say one thing. The reason for, for this uh, event for me is that you all will understand that this is very, very easy to purchase a house and to purchase a property in Israel. It is completely not something that uh, not possible. It's something that's possible to do. It's something that it's very, very uh, easy to do. And what we do here, we have very, very important, very good team 
that we can do this together with you, step by step. Uh, we have here a contract, uh, 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 Lara and Anita and Rafi and Paul that explain you about all the projects. And we have Menachem about the mortgages and I myself, and now I will represent myself and we will speak and see that this is very, very easy process to do. So uh, my name is Avram Levinsky and I am a real estate lawyer. And I have many, many clients who are currently purchasing in very, uh, a lot of places in Israel, in Netanya, in Zichron, in Yerushalayim, in Rehovot, many, many places. And now we, we, we result, and I want to speak with you about three main points uh, in this webinar. First of all, I want to speak with you about two main uh, options to purchase. In Israel, you have two main po uh, options, and I'm not going to speak about a land, purchasing in a land and to build on it. I'm not going to speak about, uh, we call it in Hebrew, a group of people that coming and purchasing. I'm going to speak about two main ways how to purchase a property in Israel and how to uh, 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 do these two main options. So first of all, we have one main option that this is first hand purchase. You are going to a contractor the contractor is coming and is showing to you how to purchase, uh, uh, what is the apartment that you are looking for, uh, how it look like, what is the size, uh, and you are going to this contractor, which mainly very big companies in Israel can be Shikun Vinui, can be Africa Israel, can be Dimri, can be many, many, and we showed you some of them. And this is one uh, uh, way to purchase in Israel. This is very common and very good. And I want to speak about the, the advantages and the disadvantages of purchasing for, uh, in this way. So advantages is for sure the, the, the process. The process is easy and the process is smooth. And I want to say why. Because you know, when you purchase from a first hand, when you purchase from a contractor, you know that, that the process is easy and smooth because you have a big company that stand in front of you that you're not dealing with someone that you don't know where he's from and what he's doing. And he's, if he has money, he has creditors, he doesn't have creditors, he's in a good economical situation, you know who is standing in front of you. You know that you are standing in front of, of a very big companies. And this is very important. And the process is much more smooth and much, much more uh, clear. There are two main uh, advantages when you purchase from first hand which I want you to remember this also when you go home, which very important. And I want you really to take it with you uh, because it's happened in most of the times in Israel uh, uh, for people that purchasing from a contractor. It's mean two main advantages that you take with you and that you will remember. First of all, you have bank guarantee, independent bank guarantee for every payment you are doing. Namely, you are going to Africa, Israel. You are coming and you, you are saying to them, look, I have 2 million shekel, take my 2 million shekel and in two years from now, give me the apartment. What will happen in, if Africa itself will be collapsing, will be bankrupt, what will happen? So therefore you have independent bank guarantee and this is something by law. And this is something that is very, very important that if something happened in the middle of the process, you have an independent bank guarantee and you can go to the bank and get your money back if something happened to the contractor. So this is one thing I want you to remember. I'm saying it's not in all the way, uh, the time because there, there are also contractors that uh, not do what they need to do according to the law. But I want you to remember that 99% of the contractors give you this independent bank guarantee. The second thing is liability. It's mean if there is any problem with the house, if there is any leaks, if there is any uh, damages, you have years of years four years, five years, seven years, doesn't matter exactly now how much because for everything in the house has another period of uh, liability, but you have liability for the things. So if, for example, you are sitting in your living room and suddenly you have a leak, you have a lot of water and you cannot see there, you know, you have someone to call, you're calling to the contractor, he's going to fix it. So these are two main things from uh, adventures that I want you to remember. When you're purchasing from contractor, you have, first of all, bank guarantee for every payment you are doing, and you have a, a also liability for all the damages if there are in the, in the, in the first years. This advantage is, uh, as we can see, that the money is linked to the index. It means it's a lot of time you are, you are paying on the 1st of January, 2020, and you get the property, the apartment in, two, in the 1st of January, 2023, for example. So three years 
as the money is attached and is linked to the index. And this can change the amount that you are paying. And this is this advantage that you need to remember. Uh, one more thing that is very, very important to know that the house is not so uh, ready all the time. So it's mean if you want to, to get to get the house now, if you need now a place where to live, you need to wait a lot of time. It's, and it's not something that uh, ready a lot of time now. Sometimes yes. Okay, sometimes yes, sometimes not. Uh, so these are the main thing about first hand purchase. Now I'd like to speak with you about second hand purchase. Uh, in the free market in Israel, you have many, many buyers, many sellers, you have hundreds of thousands of properties, and this is a huge market of uh, secondhand uh, purchase uh, properties, very clear, very easy, and also not any problem to do that and to go to buy something in the free market. However, there are a few things that I also want you to remember when you do that. First of all, advantage, you have more, I call it a room, like a space for negotiation, you have more way to negotiate you can you can be more flexible with the delivery date you can say i want it i want the house in three months from now i don't want it three years from now you have more uh, 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 you have someone to speak with M most of the contractors in israel are very very strict okay this is the price you want take it you don't want don't take it so the free market is not like that you can take you can play with that you can speak you you have much more flexibility and also the the money is not attached and it's not linked to the uh, index, and this is also very good advantages. The disadvantages for, uh, for sure is that you never know uh, what is the exact physical situation. Even if you will take an engineer, okay, that will check the house very good, you will never know what there is inside the, the walls and you cannot know 100% and you have no any uh, liability, no one will fix for you the damages that there are and that there will be maybe in the apartment after you are buying. Uh, we, can to, we can go to the next slide, uh, Rafi. Thank you. Uh, now I want to speak with you about the tax in the process. Uh, this is also uh, a few very important points which I want you to take with you and to remember. Every real estate transaction has to be tax stated. Namely, you need to pay tax on it, uh, the purchaser and the seller. We call to, to the tax that is uh, on the seller land betterment tax, and we call to the uh, tax that is on the purchaser, purchase tax. I'm not going to speak about land bet betterment tax because I'm assuming everybody here just want to purchase in Israel and want to come to Israel and to buy. So we are going to speak now about the purchase tax. And I want you to remember two things, two very important things. First of all, if you are a resident of Israel, and I'm not going to go now uh, into the definition, what does it mean, uh, resident of Israel, but we are speaking about someone that is mainly here, mainly live here, mainly in Israel, and is resident of Israel. So if you are like that, if you are living in Israel, and you, you play, or you plan to be living in Israel, and you have no any property in Israel, you can enjoy very big discount for purchase tax, not for land, but we're speaking about purchase tax, you can go get very good discount. If you are, uh, if you are a, a not resident of Israel, this is not need to interest you at all. So this is for, <clears throat> sorry, this is for Israeli resident. One more thing for purchase tax, because I know all of you are planning to do Aliyah, and Bezrat Hashem, this is very important. Uh, if you are doing Aliyah, you can enjoy very good discount for purchase tax. And this is by law, because the law is Zionistic. We are in Israel, Israeli state, and Anachnu Tzionim, we want people to do Aliyah. So the law says, if you do Aliyah, you will get good discount for purchase tax. Uh, this is for the tax. We can continue, okay? <clears throat> now I want to speak with you about due diligence, which is uh, uh, the third topic I want to speak with you today. We spoke about the two ways to purchase in Israel, first hand, second hand. We spoke about taxation. And I want to speak about one more thing, uh, one more important thing that your lawyer need to take care of and need to check very, very deeply, which is due diligence. We have two main things that the, the lawyer need to be, to be checking and need to do due diligence on them. Firstly, is the house, is the property. And second, is the seller. First of all, need to be to, to do due diligence to the house to see that there are no any liens, no mortgages, no foreclosures. And uh, especially in this year of Corona, many, many people went into uh, uh, problems, economical problems and has um, foreclosures on the house. And I can tell you about myself this year, I did uh, three or four transactions with foreclosures. 
And there is a way to deal with that, but this is very important thing to do due diligence to the house, to see what is the situation of the house. Second thing is to check the seller, to see if the seller has any problems and to see what is the situation of the sellers. And this is uh, about the diligence. And we can go to the next uh, slide, Parfi. Thank you very much. So the three uh, main points I want you to take with you for your new, your new home. Before I'm speaking about the, the three main uh, points, I want to tell you, uh, uh, to sum up, we spoke about the two ways, we spoke about, uh, 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 we spoke about also, one second, we spoke about the tax and we spoke about due diligence, and this is very important. And I want to speak with you about three points that part of them Menachem told already, and part people will, uh, will speak or spoke. First of all, money in Israel. Don't forget it. As Menachem said, people buying and their money is in USA. I have now a client that came to me and said, I signed a contract six months ago and my money is still in, in USA. I wasn't represented him when he purchased and he has a problem with the contractor. First of all, money in Israel all the time before you sign. Second of all, mortgage need to be ready. It's mean you need to check with the bank that you have a confirmation to, to get the loan. And third, find a lawyer in Israel that knows what to do and how to do. I wish you good luck and very happy that you're all here. So now about. Thank you very much, Abraham. Anita, I'm gonna hand it over to you for a couple of minutes and then we're gonna to get to the question. So go ahead, Anita. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for all of you, uh, um, Rafi, Paul, and Lara, and Abraham. I'm so uh, grateful to have such an amazing team. Uh, part of the, the thing that we got together is because we care about each one of you. We don't want anyone to take advantage of you. And it's so important. And as you can see, Paul and Menachem and Abraham and Rafi, myself and Laura, we, we belong to a very group of people that uh, really worth the trust uh, and we represent the integrity. One of the reasons we got together was that we don't want anyone to take advantage of any of you. So that's why you need to be protected. As you can see, we have representative for different aspects, bank and attorney and, and me, Lara and Menachem and uh, Rafi and Paul. I just wanna make sure that you guys understand, Lara and I actually visit every site. We visited Ir Yamin, for example, a month ago, a few days ago, I'm calling the, uh, the office to check what exactly left and I was overwhelmed and shocked to, to hear that one of the buildings is completely sold out. I don't know what's going on in Israel. This is not the market that represents the world. It's, it's beyond that. Uh, many people are interested in that. And I want you to understand one thing. For people who are really serious and they take things seriously, we're going to have many sessions about different projects and different sites all over Israel. Not only Natania and Jerusalem and Beit Shemesh, we will have Achzib and many other places. Lara and I drive to the place, learn the area, learn the schools, the communities, the population. We learn the synagogues, the, the, every, every detail. So when we provide information, we want to make sure that we uh, give you the exact right information. The only thing that we don't have control is how fast apartments and houses disappear from the market. We literally tell you guys, if you are serious and you're interested, uh, please take it, take it really seriously and, and act. And the reason why is because we are not sellers. We are not, we are advisors and we help you guys to find the right place for you and the right deal for you, whether it's investment or any, any other project that you might be interested. I have to tell you personally, I made Aliyah seven months ago after 18 years in California. We lived in Orange County, my husband and I, we came to Israel seven months ago. We, we bought an amazing house in Ranana. Uh, I am very impressed of how much planning, Lara and I were very impressed together when we went to Ir Yamim and other places, of how much planning the Israelis builders put behind every project. We were very impressed and we would like to tell each one of you, the market in Israel is different. I know it's, it's the things that are going on right now in the United States um, are also uh, crazy, but it's not normal. In Israel, it's always like this. I personally invested seven years ago. I tripled my investment. I wish I had more money to put back then. But 
what I'm telling is to all of you is is that you're not gonna lose money if you make the right decision. And you have an amazing support from Rafi, Lara, Paul, Menachem, and Abraham that got together to really provide you guys all the information you need and obviously answer all the questions. Since time is very short, I think we should go to our Q&A. Thank, Thank you, Anita. So Menachem, a couple of questions here about um, do banks give mortgages to retired people? So people in their 60s and 70s, can you talk a little bit about that? 60s still young, what are you talking about? <laughs> you're right, you're right. 70 we give also. We give up to the age of 80, even 82, 83. I, believe, I think that a specific question can come to me and I'll answer specifically to each one, but the bank is giving. We have some solutions as of a opposite mortgage or something like that, but, but we, we can give. Okay. <laughs> There's another question about getting loans for properties that are over the green line. You know, New Dam Shimon, uh, somebody was under the impression give, that it's harder give, to get a... On the major places in New Dam Shimon, we give loans. Okay. Almost all of them. We're not giving all the gvaot, but, hmm. but we give on, uh, most of them, yes. Okay, great. Um, there's some questions here about the properties. And so, yeah, we have a lot more marketing material and more details. And I think when we get to one-on-one -on -one, um, discussions, we can go over that. Uh, Menachem, there's a question about the money. Is the money insured in, in the bank? If somebody does transfer money, as you were suggesting- uh, Good US? question, good question. Uh, there is no insurance like in the United States that uh, I think that up to 100 or 150 or 200 is insured by, by the government. In Israel, there is no insurance, but in all the times, I mean, one or two times that the bank uh, collapsed or, you know, uh, all of the sudden stopped functioning, the government paid till the last cent. So even though there is no any guarantee, in the one or two cases, I mean, last 30 or 40 or 50 years, uh, uh, Israel paid everything. But uh, as of today, we don't see any, any problem with any one of the banks. I see. Okay, and for Avon, for you, somebody wants to transfer money, um, would you help them with that transfer process? Or do they have to, is it part of, you know, if it's part of the legal closing, uh, is that something that you can advise them as to how to do? Yeah, yeah, for sure. If someone wants to move his funds to Israel, uh, my phone is here, just WhatsApp me, I will explain exactly what to do. Very easy, we will be happy to assist and many of my clients from New York, I did it for them. Okay, Laura, a question for you. So somebody wants to sell their house in Canada and then they want to make Aliyah. Um, and so they want to understand what do you recommend in terms of the process? Should they sell their house first and then you know, look to find a community? What, what's your thoughts on that? You know, it's a difficult question. I guess it depends on the market, when the market is good. Um, you know, everyone's in a different situation. I would definitely tell them to reach out to me personally and we can speak about it. Um, if the time is right and if it makes sense to sell, then, then I think it is great to be able to come here and then to be able to rent in the beginning and then buy and, and know that you've sold something there and that you have the money to, to go and to invest in your home in Israel. But it's, you know, it's, it really depends. Is, is the market strong? If the market strong, then yes, I would definitely recommend doing that. If you feel that you want to wait a bit for the market to get a bit stronger, then, you know, then take that into account. That really isn't a case-to-case -case basis. Um, they can reach out to me and I'm happy to, to call them and we can go over it. Absolutely. I'd like to add something, Rafi, to that question. Yes. We're willing, if somebody has a property in Canada, United States, he, he plan to sell it. Meantime, you'd like to buy something in Israel. We are willing to give him bridge loan based on the property he's buying in, in, he's buying in Israel. For example, we'll give him bridge loan up to two years or even three years sometimes, paying interest only. Whenever he sells the property in the state, he pays the funds and they finish. I mean, this is not a long term, this is a short term loan. So, Dara, Lara. There's a question. <laughs> 
There's a question about the services, and we talk a lot about the United States, but of course we'll, we'll help anyone, whether you're coming from Australia, from the UK, from South Africa, from South America, um, you know, we, we want to help anybody, so don't just feel that we're just fo help, uh, focusing and helping people from the US. Um, Menachem, I think you said that the money can be kept in US dollars or shekels, right? They Absolutely, yes. The money will keep in the same, we don't touch any money without permission of the client. The money coming in dollar will stay in dollar, money coming in sterling will stay in sterling, money coming in, in, in uh, South African rand, which I visited many times, will stay like that. Till the client will ask to change it. I, I have to, sorry, go ahead. I have to say that Menachem specifically took care of my mortgage and I'm speechless. Don't, don't say, see, don't say. So I'm telling you, we make ourselves available. By the way, the numbers that shows on the screen are also WhatsApp numbers. So you guys can feel free to WhatsApp us if, if, you, uh, if you have the-, the That's WhatsApp. true. Uh, but I can tell you that we answer text messages and phones very late and, and trying to get to everyone and answer every question. But I personally have to say, Menachem and Bank Mizrahi Tfachot took care of my mortgage and I'm speechless. You don't get this service, not even in, in the United States. Anita, so, talk to me after that about one thing. I need to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you pay me later. Okay. Now, what happens if um, somebody wants to buy a foreigner and then they make Aliyah? Did they have to change anything? Yeah, it changed. Abraham will tell it, but he, uh, I mean, if he does it, as far as I know, let's say he buy it as a foreign, he can get 50%. But in matter of purchase tax, I think that if he, uh, up to one year is becoming to be Ole Hadash, he's getting refund from the government. The refund is the best best saving because it's a plus uh, 4% uh, every, every year or something like that. Am I right, Abraham? Something Definitely. Like that? You can be a legal advisor. So yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Definitely. And if somebody's visiting Israel, they can come into the bank and open up an account as a foreigner or how, a, how yeah, he, he can open the bank. He can open a bank account as a foreigner. Just uh, be in touch with me. And we will help him. Okay. And somebody asked about prices in Shekel. I know that years ago they were priced in dollars and now most prices that you'll see, most projects that you'll see are in Shekel. Just uh, if you're wondering, um, you know, that's the denomination that most projects are priced in. Uh, you true. might see something advertised abroad in, in, in the local currency, but most prices, most projects are, are priced in Shekel. What do you mean most? All prices in Israel from 2008 are in Shekel. I don't, I don't see any contact. I, I, maybe one every two, uh, two or three hundred contacts I see in dollars, but it's usually in Shkali. Specifically right. from, pod, uh, from projects that uh, you, can, you don't see something else. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to add one more thing, yes. Rafi. I, I see people uh, asking if they can open up a bank account online before they're coming to Israel. So as we, as we said, you have to have a power of attorney in order to open up a bank account, or if you are here in Israel, two options. It's, there is no any way to do this uh, uh, without without it, okay? Power of attorney is important. Right. Okay. We're uh, running out of time, but we'll get to a couple more questions. And then uh, we're also going to send out the recording. So you'll get an email um, from us. We're also going to include a survey, a questionnaire, just so we can better understand what you're looking for and what your questions are. And then we'll be in touch with you. Um, a question here about uh, are discounts eligible to a person that made Aliyah and is married to a, to a Tzaba, to a Zrach? What happens if you have one that's a uh, Oleh Hadash and one that's a... Uh, you can get 60%. Uh, I mean, we take the average between uh, 75 and... No, but man, that, this is it. Between yeah. 75 and 50, we can offer them up to 62.5% by law. Okay. okay. And then the last question is, the discounts, Avraham, that you mentioned, um, if somebody's uh, an Oleh, but they haven't bought anything, but they've been living in Israel for a few years, is that Oleh Hadash uh, benefits, does it last for just a few years, or how does that work? In general, I'm saying general because it's very, very, I would say, first of all, seven years. This is the time. Okay, seven years since the time you you came into Israel. Yeah. But it's about it's about days, about months. That you need to be very accurate because the tax authority not looks uh, about the time of the uh, Aliyah. They look about another thing. So, but in general, it's seven years. Just need to see where they come from. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
Okay. And one last question for Paul, for you. Somebody asked you, if you had to do it over again, would you do anything differently? Good right. question. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out that uh, Menachem was my banker as well, and he was great. Oh, uh, yeah. Talk to me I after also, that. <laughs> I, I, I took a mortgage out of my house in the United States. So I knew I wasn't going to sell it. And I used the proceeds of that to, to pay for a large part of my Israeli home. Uh, the only thing I probably would do differently, I'd probably make Aliyah a little bit earlier. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank you to Menachem and Tabram and to Paul and Nita and Lala for joining us. And uh, we'll be doing more of these in the future. And there's some exciting projects and homes that we're getting involved with. And so just reach out to us and we'll be in touch and have a good night and a good week and keep well, everyone. Kol Tov and be well. Kol Tov. Rafi, you put a lot of camera, but I'm sure people are showing you a lot. Yeah, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to get back to people. Yeah, one on one.